welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Sean Moss with Down Payment Resource, and we have a special guest today, Elise Glink, founder and CEO of Best Money Moves, who's going to talk to us about financial wellness and particularly related to your employees and how we can uh, uncover and, and educate your employees about financial wellness, financial stressors to increase their productivity, their engagement, and retention. So with that, uh, because we sort of have this mission alignment here, uh, down payment resource, here at Down Payment Resource, we totally believe in helping consumers uh, find and understand information that can help them live a better life, finding uh, programs for financial wellness and so forth. And because Best Money Moves is aligned with that mission as well, we've invited Elise to tell you guys about Best Money Moves today. So with that, uh, in, Elise, if you'll introduce yourself and kind of give us some of your background, how you went from freelance journalist to CEO of a software company. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Sean. Hi, everybody. Uh, some of you I, I may know, and some of you I just probably know by reputation, but uh, it's nice to have you here. Thank you very much to Down Payment Resource and uh, Sean and Tracy for inviting me to have a conversation with you today about financial wellness. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, not only am I the CEO of Best Money Moves, but I'm a nationally syndicated real estate and personal finance columnist. I've written 14 books on money and real estate. The fourth edition of my first-time buyer book, 100 Questions Every First-Time Homebuyer Should Ask, will be out next March from Random House. So super excited uh, about that. And as you may know, I've hosted radio for almost 20 years on WSB Radio in, in Atlanta, and now I'm on WGN Radio in Chicago. So what I have always done is try and help people make smarter decisions with their money. And that gives me just a completely different perspective when it comes to employee benefits. I have my own employees. And so I think about this both in terms of being a consumer finance expert, but also how we need to help people who are your employees not only do better with the money you pay them, but also how they can take more advantage of the programs you're already providing, like maybe a 401k. So the idea for Best Money Moves came about because uh, I had been invited to develop for other companies financial wellness programs, but all of them were designed to sell things to people who really couldn't afford them. And one day I turned to my COO and I said, you know, there's really a better, smarter way to do this. And that's how we came up with the idea for Best Money Moves. So one of the things that uh, people are always thinking about these days is financial security. You think about them as, as looking for <laughs> houses to buy, maybe, or houses to finance, or maybe houses to build. But in reality, what they're thinking about is, I wonder if I even have enough money to ever buy a house someday. And as we've seen from all of the latest statistics from the National Association of Realtors, of course, um, people who are buying houses these days, uh, who are millennials, are pushing that off, that big lifetime decision, just like marriage and other things. It's all getting time shifted between seven and 10 years. And a lot of that is due to student loan debt, but it's also due to the jobs that they're getting that aren't really enough to support what houses cost today. And so your employees want to know how they're going to be able to afford the finer things in life, like a roof with four and four walls. <laughs> so taking a little bit of a step back, financial ill health is actually a very severe problem right now. As you've probably seen in the latest bank rate surveys and over the last few years, it's all been the same. Almost two-thirds of Americans are completely broke. They don't even have $500 in cash. They're one paycheck away from living on the street, and they work for you. They're your employees. But they're not the only ones who have financial stress. So the company, I've talked to four or 500 companies across the country, and their customers and, and employees also have financial stress. And that's really what people are spending the day thinking about. Whatever it is that they're doing, instead of thinking about what you want them to think about, which is the work that they have in front of them, um, or maybe it is you know how to give other their people to buy or build houses, um, they're spending their days thinking about how they're going to be able to pay their mortgage or their rent. Um, the latest estimates are showing that over 30 million employees are severely or moderately affected by financial stress. And if you think about that, that's a pretty big number. 
Um, $15,000 per employee, that is the cost to employers in terms of lost productivity, workplace accidents, health and welfare issues, turnover, and if you've talked to your HR people, or maybe you are the HR people, people just walking into the HR offices and uh, try unloading about the issues that they're having regarding financial stress. So there's just um, a lot of this kind of discussion going on right now. Uh, Sean, we didn't talk about this ahead of time, but I, I think you were going to poll everybody to see um, how financially stressed their employees are. Do you want to do that now? Yeah, yeah, I'll pull that up now. So uh, for the audience, which is comprised of MLS and association and uh, lender and bank leadership, uh, we're going to put this on the screen here. And tell us what percentage of your staff, your employees, do you think is financially stressed? And you can click your answer right here on the screen, and then I'll share the results here. Uh, go ahead and click your vote. We'll give you about 10 seconds, and then uh, we'll share the results on the screen. And again, what percentage of your staff, your employees, do you think is financially stressed? And we've got about half of you voted. Go ahead and click your answer on the screen here, and I'll close this out in just a couple seconds. Okay, so let's uh, let's share the results here, and we'll show this on the screen. So here are the responses from our audience. Uh, a quarter of you thought that less than 25% of your staff was financially stressed. Half of you thought that about half of your staff was financially stressed. And then a quarter of you said, we didn't really know. And so with that, Elise, um, maybe we talk about the business case and kind of talk about the employer perspective for a moment. Absolutely. I would I would just say that for all of you who weren't sure if they were stressed, um, you should see my inbox for my website, thinklink.com, this week, because I have heard from tons of people who are all freaked out about what happened with Equifax and are wondering if their credit is going to be tarnished, if their identity is going to be stolen. And really, when you think about financial stress, you know, we talk about it in terms of what you can afford on a, on a weekly or monthly basis or whether you're saving enough for retirement. But credit issues, credit card debt, uh, just identity theft protection and, and how the, those, that pieces, those pieces of information are possibly going to be used to file uh, fraudulent tax returns. Those are all of the topics that I've been hearing about this week. So I think probably everybody's a little stressed. So when you think about financial wellness, this is kind of how people think about it. It's something just sort of floating around in the sky, and they sure wish that it was going to you know, happen for them. But when you look at what the numbers say, you know, really, your employees are, are much more stressed than you might even imagine. So two-thirds are concerned about overall debt, 60% um, for retirement, half for tuition, half for basic living expenses, and uh, a little over a third for medical debt. And it's, it's definitely making people sick. So the new connections that PhDs around the country are, are drawing, and it's everywhere from WashU and St. Louis that had a day-long um, event on financial wellness yesterday, to um, Harvard, Yale, Stanford, uh, and Berkeley are all looking at the issue of financial stress as causing, a, being a, a primary causation of ill health and poor health outcomes. And it turns out that people who report high levels of stress, of which there are huge, are more than four times as likely to suffer, suffer from um, poor health. They feel sick uh, and they are sick. So your millennial employees are even more worried about money than everybody else. And this is particularly troublesome if you are in the financial world where you're probably looking to pull credit histories of people who you may hire to do financial services jobs. And if your millennials even have a, a credit history at all, uh, you're going to see them pretty overloaded with debt. And for most millennials, they're looking to you, their employers, to be the person that they, or the company, let's see, companies are people too, but to be the, the voice of trust that they can um, go to for financial advice because they consider themselves to be financially illiterate. And so this is really a dangerous cycle that we're seeing for companies across the country where financial stress is causing lower productivity and retention, and then it's causing because you get lower productivity and lower retention, you're getting also higher workplace accidents, 
unexplained absences and health care costs, which then causes even higher financial stress, not to mention the kind of stress it's causing the employer. So it's, it's really not a, it's not a healthy cycle. So why should you care? The reason you should care, and this is, comes from the Brookings Institution, is that debt isn't just about dollars and cents to people. This is a deep emotional issue. And they like it when you show that you appreciate the financial challenges that they're facing. Um, yes, if you bring this up, they may wish inside somewhere that you could pay them a million dollars a year, but they all know, and the studies show this, that, that you can't. They understand you know, what employers are paying However, they like it when you're empathetic with them and that you're providing tools that can help them solve the problem. So this is a, a yet another year of financial wellness, right? Uh, Ann Hewitt, the last, last two years, has said that financial wellness is a priority for companies and that almost 94% of companies, 93.7 I think is the number, are very or moderately like, likely to add to their financial wellness portfolio. And this is just this number just hit, could could barely get any any higher. Now I had somebody ask me the other day, what what are five things that you and your company can do to improve financial wellness? And I want to run through these right now because it gets to the heart of how we've designed Best Money Moves and why we think it's so successful for um, employers as they go through this process. And number one. We say to them, you know, you're probably already offering a bunch of financial wellness programs or what companies consider to be in the financial wellness vein. And one of them are like a 401 or a 403B program, budget calculator, interactive advice and content. Do you offer any of that? And then you should survey your employees to find out what their top financial stressors actually are because unlike every other other program out there basically we don't measure financial stress as one big ball like that falls on your head we actually break it up and I'll show you when we do the demo in just a moment what I mean but we look at 15 different possible stressors everything from you know you're scared that you won't have enough money for retirement all the way to you know do you have elder care issues or do you have relationship issues uh, marital trouble so we try to break this down because uh, we think it's important to understand what's really going on with people. Then you need to identify the missing pieces. So what are the three financial stressors that are, that are or four or five, that aren't covered by your existing programs? And try to identify whether these are one-time problems like a lack of information or an ongoing issue, or is it a credit issue? And then find the fix that actually works. And what we're finding as we talk to companies all over the country is that they're not following this basic process. They're, instead, it's like, oh, I need a financial wellness program. Well, okay, but there's lots of different things out there, and it's really good to find the tools that are really helpful. Um, when... One of the reasons um, that we put the slide in here is, again, employers don't even know how to choose a great financial wellness provider. So here's what we think, what I think you should do. Look for something low cost, measurable, right? Everything should be in the cloud, easy to implement, customizable, have engagement drivers so that your people can actually get touch points, multiple touch points per month. No sale environment because if your people are broke, they shouldn't be getting sales ads for things, right? And very minimal or no IT department involvement because they're already overworked. Here's what your employees want. They want something easy to use and they want person-to-person -person coaching. They want the content to be deep and unbiased and helpful and actionable. Uh, they want it to be mobile first and cloud-based because they want to be able to use it either at their desktop or at home with their, you know, the computer they have there or on their phone. They want advice and guidance. It's a primary driver for employees. And of course, they want it to be fun and they want step-by-step -step guidance. So almost all of the financial wellness programs out there are designed to do two things. The sell things to employees, right? So lead generation, and I'm sure you may employ some of that yourselves with the different companies that you have. Or they're looking for assets under management, like robo-investment kinds of companies. And this just goes against the grain, and maybe this is my journalism, consumer, you know, <laughs> pro-consumer background, but it just strikes me that if you are broke, you shouldn't be being sold things, and you particularly shouldn't be sold things in the employee-employer environment. 
So best money moves is a little bit different, right? So we are all the things that I've just told you, you should be looking for. Um, we're family and employer friendly. We're bank agnostic. Um, we give you real time feedback and we have money coaches. Now, unlike all the other uh, companies I've talked to, I, I'm imagining that the people who are listening today, that, that you actually know who these people are. So our money coaches are actually members of the National Foundation for Consumer Credit uh, and uh, sorry, for credit counseling and for they're accredited um, and affiliated with HUD and the Ninth Circuit. So uh, they are the people that maybe you even use. I know um, that, that many of you employ these people or you've dealt with them or run into them. And so what we've done is partner with them in order to uh, give them a sense of uh, well, we're using them as our back end for the money coaching, but for our employees, uh, they like this, again, no sale and person-to-person -person environment. So I want to jump into showing you the, the actual product and what it looks like. Um, Sean, I think we have another poll that you wanted to do, don't we? We do. And so for our audience, one of the tools included in Best Money Moves is this stressometer. And it measures a number of different stressors. So what we want to do is we're going to put some of the top stressors on the screen here and click on here and tell us of uh, from among Best Money Moves users, which of these do you think is the most cited or leading stressor? And again, click your answer on the screen here and then we'll, we'll show the results. And then Elise will walk us through the actual you know live Best Money Moves tool where you'll get to see the stressometer and the other uh, categories or factors that it measures. Uh, but again, which of these do you think is most cited or is the leading stressor among Best Money Moves users? And about two-thirds of you voted. Go ahead and click your answer on the screen here and then we'll share the results. And all right, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And we'll share this on the screen. All right, so here we go. Uh, credit card debt was your number one answer, and a debt even split among retirement, managing money, student loan debt, and credit report or credit scoring. So, Elisa, give us a little commentary. What's the real answer? <laughs> the answer is it's different for every employee group. So, um, in Denver, we have a number of customers that are on board with us. They're United Way of Denver and Delta Dental of Denver. Denver. Housing is their number one issue. And the, for those of you in the housing industry, that shouldn't surprise you one bit, right? Denver's been the hottest housing market for I don't know how long. And uh, Sean, you probably know how few first-time buyers are actually able to, to buy there. I mean, the prices are just sky high. Um, but for other companies that where they have an older population, we're seeing like in Chicago and even Atlanta, we're seeing that um, it's either credit card or retirement issues that are popping up as number one. And what's really great about having something that is live and in the cloud is it changes all the time. And I'll show you what it looks like. So this is when you log into Best Money Moves for the first time, this is what you get, a very flexible mobile first platform that uh, – uh, measures financial stress and, and gives you all these goodies. And let me show you how it works. At the top, every company gets a unique money coach number. We've got an explanation of, of what they can do, and we've got their hours here. And so your employees can feel free to call them and get the kind of help that they need. Um, over here, this box with the exclamation mark, this is a box where you type your message to your employees. Um, we, you know, usually companies will use it to announce a special contest that they're running or that there's a lunch and learn or whatever. It's just another portal for communicate, one-way communication. This is our box over here with our favicon, and this is where we announce contest winners and all the rest. The stressometer, which is really one of you know, several proprietary algorithms that we have running this um, is just as a centerpiece. This drives uh, the primary education on the site. So you would go here, and right now it shows that I'm a five with student debt. But let's say, given what's going on with Equifax right now, um, I'm very concerned about my credit score, and I'm going to give it a nine. And you'll see it pop up right here on a nine. You can see my history is that I'm rather stressed financially all the time anyway. Got to get best money moves, better making money, as my husband calls it. But um, healthcare costs, 
let's say that that's actually also, let's say, let's call that a 10. So what happens when you have an 8, 9, or 10, and you try to go back to the dashboard, first you get some points up here. But what we're being told is that the stress level is really high and you should consider calling one of our money coaches. And then the algorithm kicks in and it starts to send information about the things I have the highest stress about. So you can see that healthcare costs is 10. It's sending me three things right here because our program is now trying to figure out what it is about healthcare costs that's making me crazy, right? Because I can't, again, if I don't drive down and dive deeper into what's causing the problem, I'm not going to solve it. So out of our 525 plus uh, videos and articles that we have in here, um, you can see we've got healthcare costs are at the top here. And then credit report and score, right? So now we're looking at for credit report, ID theft insurance, myths about your report. And then the third one was education and student debt. And you can see down here that the last one are some, op you know, again, opportunities to lower your costs of student debt. Because, you know, student debt comes in a variety of, of, of ways, right? It's you're either, a, let's say, a millennial and you're trying to pay down your student debt, or maybe you're even, uh, I hate to say it, Gen X, or maybe you're a baby boomer and you're still paying off some sort of student debt, maybe law school or med school, or maybe just even college. Um, or maybe you're a a parent of a young child and you want to save up for this, you know, so your kid doesn't have student debt and you want to put away money for college tuition. And so the program needs to learn that and the way it learns it, because we use um, some pretty cool machine learning technology, is what you uh, click on and start to read. And so the stressometer is tied in directly over here to the recommended reading list, which I think gives people a tremendously interesting idea of how relevant information is sent to them. When you go into um, one of the articles, what you see is that they are all written by my friends who are award-winning financial journalists, uh, which is great. And all of the articles and information, which are all up here in the resources page, and I'll show you in a moment, have all been customized and custom written for Best Money Moves. So we don't stream in articles randomly from the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg because we don't think that's helpful. What we think is helpful is to have an entire body of written and video content that actually explains things in a way that people need to understand it and gives them actionable items that they can, things that they can do or learn to help them understand what to do. The articles are gone through at least once or twice a year and and anytime there's news or information, we have somebody just watching so that it all gets updated with the latest information. Elise, now, we, uh, yeah. Quick, quick question. Sorry to interrupt. So, how much content do you have? How big is this body of uh, articles and so forth? Sure. So, we have, as you can see, over 520 uh, written articles, plus we have video that. It is being added to the system now. Uh, we had a little issue with the video. We had to take it down. It wasn't displaying correctly. Um, and we're making more every single month we add to the body of content. So it's a, it's a significant amount. Good deal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And if it's somebody who just wants to learn about something, by the way, you can just go in here and dig deep and read all the information about a particular topic, right? We have in housing... 197 results uh, just because housing covers so many issues. But if you wanted to, for example, um, read about PMI, it should. I don't know if I've done P. Oh, there you go. Seven results for PMI. So it's it allows you to search for the thing that you're most interested in, or you can just go dig deep and read all of the stories. So we wouldn't be much of a money management uh, platform if we didn't actually have a budget. And so this is the budget uh, calculator that's built in here. And we're teaching people about net income, uh, cash flow, what it looks like, the difference between your expenses and your net income. We're showing them net and gross income. And uh, we show them on their monthly expenses, which at the moment they have to enter on their own. Um, at the beginning of the second quarter of next year, they'll have the opportunity uh, to download the information from their bank accounts if they want to do that. But it takes about 20 minutes to set up your budget for the first time, and then every month you can just tweak it. And so another one of our really interesting algorithms 
that I think everybody on this uh, call will probably appreciate, is we ask people when they first sign in, you get to this profile page, and we ask you what, do you, what your living situation is, because living situation is typically your lo single largest expense. It eats up, you know, usually anywhere between a quarter to um, almost a half of your budget if you're renting and in renting in some areas. And so if we don't know that about somebody, we really don't know much about them at all. And we really can't advise them on what their best money move is. And so once you fill out that thing and you choose your living situation, best money moves puts you into a imaginary budget bucket. And so we've got proprietary algorithms running behind the scenes, and we've got all kinds of data sets that feed into it. Soon we're going to actually have a geolocator as well. And that's what drives the Best Money Moves recommendation. So as you add in your different expenses, we keep track for you. We show you what your spending is. We show you what your Best Money Move is. And we tell you if you're on budget or, down here, what you're overspending by. And you can see this very easily up here in the budget summary where we show you, um, and it's super easy to add stuff, I can, I can show you that in a moment if you like, but um, we show you, you know, what your income is, and you can see we've got all kinds of income, strange income coming into the ThinkLink uh, uh, household right now. But the, what's interesting about this is that so many families are actually in this situation where you have multiple earners in a single family, not just even a husband and a wife, but sometimes there's an aunt or an uncle or a sibling that's living there or an adult child who's also bringing income into the house. This is one of the reasons why Fannie Mae changed, and, Fa and Freddie, I believe, also changed the way that it looks at income uh, for some of the FHA loans. Then you've got expenses for September, uh, and you can see that I'm, I'm well over what I should be spending in some of these, ha these areas. And then we also allow you to set up a savings account, and then we help you track uh, your progress to the goal. And we have some special tools to help you pay down credit cards as fast as possible. And so this really gives you an idea of some of the, the, the breadth for um, calculations. I've already showed you resources. One of the things I should tell you is that there's a, a huge ability to customize best money moves. Um, and for those of you who are in the sort of on the lending side of things, um, one of the questions that I get asked all the time is, can you give this to potential buyers? And the answer is yes. Uh, and I can, I'd be happy to tell anybody about that separately. But in terms of, you know, what you can add to the product, um, we have an ability to customize each individual company's information. So if you want to add your benefits information, we can add that for you. Um, if you want on the dashboard, for example, to um, brand this and have your name up there, we can do that. We can also have it brought to you by Best Money Moves. We can also add another box here, and it has your number. Uh, if you're a lender that you want you know, your people to be able to call your 401k, for example. Um, or an employer wants to have people call your 401k. And then um, there's a bunch of other customizations as well, but we think that it's, um, and we're already starting to see our companies pick up on this. Now, we run a contest, and the contest every month, you can see it on the leaderboard on the homepage, you get points for every single thing you do, and the points translate into uh, a, random, a randomly drawn prize. Um, which is a cash prize, and right now it's $100 for the person who gets drawn randomly. We also have a second contest going where we, for the person who gets the highest number of points anywhere in the system, they also get $100. We may have to change the rules pretty soon because the same person's won with like 80,000 points a month, so you can imagine that they are spending lots of time and learning things, uh, and we may have to limit the number of times they can win. But lots of people are, are now trying that out, and we're seeing um, – lots of points at the end of the month in the forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar uh, at sixty thousand point range as well, which is exciting to see. But you also have the ability to run your own demo, uh, your own company contest. I have it under demo because this is the demo version, but it would just say whatever your name of the company is here. We have to turn this on for you, but if you want people to read about a new high deductible health care plan that you're uh, bringing on board in, let's say, this November for open enrollment season, we could put all of the information in. We can tag it with certain points. I'll show you how that looks over here. Like We have all this, the points in the point structure. 
uh, you can tag it and then you can uh, run your own contests and give your own prizes. And we actually have a company, one of the Colorado companies that is giving away grocery store gift cards. And um, they're just seeing 50% plus usage right now, which is terrific. So what do you get? What do you guys get? What does the admin get? Well, you get this reports button. Nobody else can see it. And when you click on it, what it shows you in real time is who is using the product and how they're using the product um, and, and what's going on behind the scenes with your employee stress. And that's the wonderful thing about being in the cloud, right? Everything is instantaneous. So as I, as I clicked on this, it pulled down the latest information, which is showing you that of our demo test group, 123 people, let's call them our employees, have tested it out. And their average high stress is a seven. But their average stress overall, over the last six or seven months, has only been a little under a five, which is great. When you look at the different stress types, they're registering stress. 55% um, is retirement. 59% is credit card debt. So you can see where your own imaginings of you know what people are stressed about where they come in. But you can also see that 15% of people are now interested in and in worried about identity theft. Uh, healthcare costs are big and education and student debt. And this is the average stress for those particular stress levels. So retirement is the highest stress level. And yet for credit card debt, it, it's a five, which is moderate stress. So if you're thinking, well, what can I do to dial that down? Maybe you want to bring in a lunch and learn on how to reduce credit card debt, or maybe you want to engage us to do a webinar for you, a special webinar on one of these topics, and we certainly can. Down here, you see the overall financial health metric. Um, we expect to be able to introduce credit scores to this later in the, uh, probably the beginning of 2018. And then that metric will be added into this as well. But this scrapes the data. You can see, you can't see anybody's individual data, but as a whole, it scrapes everybody's data, both for savings and then down here, credit card debt. You can actually see that people are registering an $8,000 credit card debt, which is fairly significant. And then you see usage rates, how many people have been online this month and how many minutes they're spending online. And this tracks pretty well with the regular ones, um, the regular company data that we have. And then it's super easy. All you would do to type in your message is, um, here is how you update this. Hit save message and it appears here and it appears anywhere this box is, but only for your employees. Now, we also have the ability, I guess this is another customizable feature, to group your employees. We've got them grouped here as companies. These are some of the different companies that we're testing our demo for us or are part of our beta. But the, um, and you can see Equifax was testing it as well. Um, they, we have the ability to group your employees. So if you have, let's say, five locations or if you have, um, you know, part-time, full-time employees. We've got some hospital systems that have some union, non-union employees. Um, in fact, one hospital we're, we're talking to right now has four different groups that they want to set up. What that will allow you to do is when we set that up at the beginning, to then engage with people and see how those different groups are performing either as a whole or separately and individually. And there's a lot of different ways that you can set that up. So that's pretty much best money moves. And I, I want to give this back to you, Sean, for a moment and see if there are any questions, other questions that have come up. Uh, so let's talk about contests real quick. What, what's kind of the goal? Um, you know, we talked about what they look like, and, and I wanted to clarify, these are not for your customers, but their employees. And can you kind of talk through why you started these contests, how that idea came about? Sure. Um, as part of our engagement strategy, we really wanted um, to figure out ways to engage people in best money moves. And given that another one of my companies, ThinkLink Media, does social media and engagement for um, big companies, we've been hired by, you know, Discover Card, for example, and a company down in Texas called One Technologies to help them with their platforms. We know that um, ongoing engagement is really important for usage, especially when it comes to money, because it's easy to like just shelve it and just not think about it. And so we started contests um, and we gave points out for reading, but we wanted to do something more, and that's why we have cash prizes. And we fund the cash prizes unless you're doing your own company-wide contest, in which case you fund the prize. 
but we'll help you with the rules and we'll get it turned on for you and get it working right. Um, and that's also why we have this, these weekly newsletters that go out because we want people to be aware of the latest news that's going on. We do one week where we announce the winners of the contest and another with features that are going on. And, and so we want people to be engaged in thinking about it. Some upcoming tools that we're incorporating include texting in addition to just emails, because we all know millennials aren't reading their emails uh, as, as much as older people are. Uh, we will also be adding in um, a forum, community forum, moderated, of course, so that people can talk to each other about what they're doing and learn even more tips and tricks. So those are some of the engagement drivers for us. Good deal. So let's talk about, let's talk to employers. Um, you mentioned Delta Dental uh, and a few other customers in Colorado. What about MRIS, for example, one of the biggest MLSs in the country? Can you talk about lessons learned from among other customers? Um, absolutely. So MRIS, um, I want to go back to, hang on a second, this is going to look a little awkward, but I want to um, go back to my presentation here and take you down, since we've now gone through all of this, um, I want to take you down to some of the things that people are actually saying about us. Well, first I should tell you that we're a finalist for the next great HR technology company. So any of you who will be at HR Tech in October in Las Vegas, you'll see us there. Um, and we certainly had some very nice um, things said about us. We've been named a top 20 financial wellness program, which is great, by Shortlister. Um, we were picked the top out of 24 competitors uh, as the best partner for their for a, a financial services client. And so um, Monica Goodwin, which who you may know, um, she's the vice president of human resources at M, uh, Bright MLS, which is MRIS. Uh, she said that that this has just been working great. They've had it for a year now, and the employees love it. In fact, we've heard from a couple of employees who have just written in to say, hey, this is just like saving my life. Thank you very much. And so we feel, you know, re that's obviously really great uh, feedback to get. And, and we're hoping to continue with them this year. I'm pretty sure that they're going to do that. Um, when I started to, was working on Best Money Moves in the beginning, um, I met Monica. David had hired me to uh, David Charon, I'm sure you guys know who that is. Um, he had invited me to come speak at one of their board meetings, and I met Monica, and I was I was telling the board about how I feel that you know just with the compression of media the way it is, there has to be another way to reach people to provide them with the information they need to make smart decisions with their money. And she said, "Boy, do we need that!" And so when I she was instrumental in helping us formulate best money moves. Um, and the same thing, it was it was great with, um, when I met with Tracy and Rob Crane, uh, you guys were great, obviously, and, in, in, uh, you know, Down Payment Resource just being incredibly supportive. Um, Delta Dental's uh, president, the one in Colorado, uh, Helen Drexler, she's the president and CEO, she used to work at Anthem. And uh, when I met her, it was just sort of random, actually. And, and she also became somebody, you know, with a deep knowledge of the healthcare industry and the way that they were moving in the areas of financial wellness and financial well-being, um, lent a hand in her expertise in in getting us up and running. So, it's been wonderful to have this kind of support from corporate America as we've been developing this product. And I should mention that we only came out of beta in January, so we we're really nine months into our first year, and it's nice to have this kind of feedback and this kind of uh, acceptance. Um, Sean, are there any other questions? Yeah, so uh, we've got an audience of uh, some MLS and association staff and leadership, but we also have a lot of lenders and banks present um, in housing, finance, and, and even on the real estate side, we hear all the time, and of course we at Down Payment Resource you know, are all over the issue of the down payment being a huge obstacle to home ownership. But can you talk about how Best Money Moves can prepare more renters for home ownership and how maybe lenders could use this creatively to get it out to uh, their referral partners and even ultimately borrowers, prospective home buyers? Sure. So we're actually in conversations with a real estate company that also has a mortgage lender as part of it. And the conversation that we're having, which I think is helpful, is how do we use it for 
generating more business and to ed- not only just generating business, but generating better business, right? Educating borrowers and prospective borrowers or future home buyers on all the things that they need to do to really step forward and be able to be, you know, first time buyers. And so this is, I, I think that there's a ter- tremendous solution here um, for this particular company. We're going to roll it out, I think, in March when my fourth edition of my first time buyer book comes out um, in conjunction with Best Money Moves. But I think that, you know, once we have the credit piece added, you know, the people that you give this to, whether they're your employees or their future prospects, will have all the tools that they need in a trusted, secure, private environment to make the very best decisions that they want to make. If you're a lender, We can certainly put um, a box, and you'll remember at the top of Best Money Moves, we had, I'll bring it back so you can see it, we have that Call Money Coach box. We can put a Call Your Lender box with your name right there. Same thing with real estate agents, um, you know, anybody in the real estate industry that wants a constant reminder. And on a phone, this, by the way, looks fabulous on a phone because it was designed for a phone, that box is at the top. So if we did a mirror box with your number in it, it would be right at the top of their phone as well. So it's a it's just a great ongoing reminder. But remember I said that we can customize this to add your whatever custom content. So for an employer to an employee, you, you might want to add your own employee benefits. But if you were providing this to a prospect, what you may want to provide is different information, more information about your mortgage programs or about mortgage programs in general, or perhaps you want us to add a different kind of a calculator for your borrowers or your future prospects. So that kind of level of customization is available as well. We hope by next year to have this available for the U.S. market in Spanish, but I have been answering RFPs for uh, very large companies that are in several different countries. And uh, one of them, which is a a healthcare uh, technology provider, um, they have 13 different countries and they would want to bring best money moves to all of those. So, that requires a different level, but you know those languages would be available as well down the line. So just as a sort of a future growth opportunity for us. That's great. Uh, so a couple more questions. Uh, sure. Just kind of getting at a closing statement perhaps. If you could narrow the mission of Best Money Moves to one obstacle or one issue or one barrier that you want Best Money Moves to help solve, what would you say that is? I am all about lowering financial stress. If we can get people to tell us what's wrong, we can solve the problems. And for uh, employers, there is no bigger ROI available today because your employees who are financially stressed, and that's most of them, are broke and they're costing you money every single day. So for a company to give this to their employees at the price that we're offering, and we didn't talk about price, but I'm happy to sort of walk you through the pricing. it's a, we've priced this extremely affordably, and depending on the numbers, it's available as inexpensively as $1.55 per month per person, all in. If you want it with the credit score, there'll be an additional uh, 10% cost to that, but the, you know, for everybody else, you know, it's just a dollar. It, it's cheaply as a dollar fifty-five for teeny tiny companies under a hundred. It's four dollars and fifty-five cents a month, and then the next price break is two dollars and fifty-five cents, and then a dollar fifty-five. And then if you're a really big company over ten thousand, we have custom pricing. Uh, there's a one-time startup fee that runs uh, ten dollars per person. Um, there's a minimum on that of five hundred dollars and a maximum of ten thousand dollars. So we have a um, a, a really solid, well-priced program that we think has tremendous application. Good deal. Thanks for that. And so uh, that's the obstacle. Now, if we if we say, okay, let's let's define success. What does success look like for? There's really three different audiences here. There's you and the Best Money Moves team and and company and brand. Um, what's success for you? But for employers. We've talked about uh, usage of the tool. We've talked about retention. We've talked about productivity. How would you define success if you had to narrow that down to one factor? What is success for employers and what is success for you? So what's success for us is working with companies to 
you know, get really the highest usage possible. I mean, obviously, I want to win HR tech and, you know, be named, be crowned the queen of HR companies, whatever. But um, it's not really about me that way. This is this is a product, just like my whole career I've spent trying to help people make smarter decisions with their money. This is really a product to help do that in mass scale. So for me, getting people over the whole country to feel less stress because they're managing things as best they can, that would be success for me. For companies, you know, this is a longer a longer term uh, problem and a longer term solution. So I can't promise you that the minute you start your co- employees start using this, that everything's going to get better. What I can tell you is that for some of our companies that have been on board six, eight, ten months, they are starting to see people be less stressed. And it's anecdotal at the moment. We're hoping to pair up with a big healthcare. Um, EAP later on uh, next year and the year after, where we'll be able to actually have metrics available on the health level that will show a reduction of healthcare costs. And then, of course, we'll be able to tie in uh, retention metrics, 401k metrics, and some other things in a a more uh, kind of a premium uh, data package that we're hoping to put together for employers next year and the year after. So, we think that over the next three to five years, pe- companies that use this are going to see uh, start to see a dramatic and meaningful turnaround in employee stress levels, and that's that's the goal. Yeah, and and so as the companies use it, ultimately we want their employees to use it, and uh, maybe we covered this, but you know we talked about companies that are using it and some of their feedback. What about usage rates? How high have you seen those? Right. Those, Sean, are, they're tremendous. They're actually so much better than I thought they were going to be. And I had high expectations, but we're seeing an average usage rate right now of over 31%. And some of our companies are showing usage rates as high as 50%. That's of their and entire not, staff, right? Of their entire population on an ongoing basis. And so, you know, we're talking with, com- those are companies that have between 150 and 250 employees. So they're not, they're not small they're not teeny tiny companies. They're decently sized companies, and they're getting um, a lot of people to, even if they're just not using the tools, but they're going in and reading about topics. We're finding that that the people are really making good use of the reading library. That's great. That's great. Uh, so I think we've addressed all the questions that have come in. I'm going to ask the audience one last time. If you have any other questions for Elise. Uh, go ahead and type those in the chat box, and uh, we'll take advantage of her while she's here. But at least anything you want to close with, uh, parting statements or advice for the audience? Well, I think I would just say, you know, we talked, uh, we, we said we would talk a little bit about the Equifax credit issue. And I, I have to say that I think it's going to be pretty hot for Equifax and actually all of the credit reporting bureaus for the next few months, maybe. But eventually this will blow over. Um, just the way that nobody thought anybody would ever shop at Target again, and yet they do. So, you know, in our, you know, it's sad. I was on um, Chicago Tonight on our local PBS station in Chicago, WTTW, and I was sitting next to a really smart um, cyber expert. And, you know, he was just saying that nothing is secure, right? The Pentagon gets hacked, and companies get hacked all the time. And even when you have patches that you can download, um, even the downloads, sometimes don't have, aren't fully, you know this from updating your own computers, right? How often do you try to do an update and it crashes your computer? Well, in an enterprise level system, it's pretty hard to do. Um, Should they have made a a better job of it? Absolutely. And um, it would be, you know, nice that we could all go back and live in our bubbles where all of our, we imagine all of our information is safe and now we know it isn't. And so that just adds to the stress that's going on out there and hopefully there will be a solution for it soon. But as I said in my online column about this, uh, I actually have signed up for their, their, I already pay for a credit monitoring program, of course, um, but I've also signed up for their free one. And while it's a little bit skimpy, it worked just fine for me. So um, that's all I uh, can say about that. You know, good luck to everybody on it. Good deal. Well, Elise, we uh, we have addressed all of the questions that came in. Uh, we want to thank you from Down Payment Resource for joining us. We love the tool. We love the idea. Uh, we love the synergy. And um, for the audience, uh, I see Elise just put your contact info up here. And 
Uh, we have recorded this webinar. We'll send a recording and some follow-up information out most likely tomorrow. Uh, and Elise, again, thank you. Uh, everybody have a wonderful day. It's been a pleasure, Sean. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for, for tuning in. And if I can answer any other kinds of questions for you, please feel free to reach out to me or to Sean or to Tracy, uh, and we'll be happy to get back in touch. But thanks so much for spending an hour with me. Excellent. Thanks, Elise. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm. Bye.